November was the deadliest month for coronavirus in Iowa, and this month we could see even more deaths. One of the families still feeling the pain of losing their loved ones passing is the Gronert family in eastern Iowa. Their grandparents dying just one hour apart from one another. Local 5 Sarah Beckman has their story tonight. Jane and Norris, fondly known as Nori, Gronert have strong roots in Iowa. They lived up in uh, up near Cedar Rapids. Um, basically forever. <laughs> That's their grandson, Adam Skibby. He remembers big holiday gatherings with his grandparents, everyone coming together, their union spawning so much love. I said they were a rock in a way, but they're not, they're more like, they were like home base, you know, like, you know, they had, they had one person that you, like one group that you knew that was always going to be there. You had an excuse to go. You wanted to see grandma and grandpa, even if like, even if nothing else, you wanted to go do that. Um, which was just a beautiful thing to have, you know. I'm 40 years old, and um, to be able to have that kind of time with grandparents is pretty, I mean, it's pretty amazing. We were really lucky in that regard. But. As Jane and Nori grew older, they slowed down, eventually moving from their home for nearly half a century into an assisted living apartment. The family visited when the pandemic hit, waving to grandma and grandpa from the balcony. And then they had an outbreak at their center, uh, their living facility. And it was one of those like, oh, like, this is not cool. Like, you know, you, you worried it, you're worried about those. I mean, obviously, the higher risk people and they would have been the highest risk in our family. Um, so you worry about that first. Jane got coronavirus first. Nori didn't test positive until a few days later. The family unable to be in their room to comfort them in their final days. They passed within about an hour of each other in bed together. So yeah, it was one of those, I guess, I mean, it's beautiful in one way, you know, like you can't, you can't, the way that their life was and they lived together their basically their entire lives. You can't ask for a more fitting exit, but the circumstances around what led to that exit are really unfortunate. Adam says even three weeks after their deaths, moving on is difficult, especially because of the pandemic. It's, it's little by little, and I and I think it's just really hard to shut the door and like have closure because there's you know there's no funeral, there's no there's no safe way to do any of this stuff. So we're all we're all leaning on each other, and and I think from what I've gathered, the family is dealing with it. You know, we're all dealing with it in our own ways. Obviously, we're going to come to terms with it in different stages at different times, but I think we're all sort of tripping through it. But speaking about his grandparents helps Adam share their legacy and the message that the virus can impact anyone. I still hear people say that they don't know anybody who's been impacted by this. And if given the opportunity to talk about them, I want to talk about them because these were good people. And they lived a long life, yes, and they went out in a nice way. I mean, with each other at least. But like it didn't have to go this way. I mean, none of it's, it's all been worse than it needed to be, I think. For now, Adam will keep his grandparents' memory in his heart. We're good huggers, you know, the old people are nice and squishy and you just like, you can't get a hug like grandma and grandpa's. Um, and, and, you know, they were always really, really, I mean, being a grandchild, obviously they were, they never had anything but smiles for us. Sarah Beckman, Local 5 News, We Are Iowa.